Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition and we love everything about board games and board game collecting. So today I'd like to offer to you my first impressions of a game I've been having a hell of a lot of fun with. So allow me to introduce to you, without further ado, Die Tavernen im Tiefenthal. Die Tavernen im Tiefenthal is obviously in German, it's not actually available in English yet, but it is a language independent game. So this is the first time I've ever acquired a game in another language. Um, and there are English rules available on Board Game Geek, and they're very good actually. Um, so this game is for two to four players. It comes from the designer Wolfgang Warsch. You may know him from all other sorts of amazing games, such as Quacks of Quidlinburg and The Mind. Um, and it's produced by Schmidt Spiele. It's supposed to take about 60 minutes to play according to the box, but at two players it doesn't really feel that long. Um, how weighty is it? Not really. I think it's a, it's very much a mid-weight game. Um, and what it is, is like the whole concept of the game is that you're running a tavern and you're trying to upgrade your tavern and acquire guests to come visit you. Um, and this is represented in um, deck management. So you have a deck of um, equipment for your building, um, which also has patrons in there. And when you play them out at the tables in your bar, they'll activate different things for you. All of these activations come through dice. So you have your own pool of dice, which you roll, and then which you pass to your opponent and you get to choose something from theirs. So there's a little bit of dice manipulation, but not a ton, but dice are really what fuels this card driven game. Um, so that's really what it asks you to do. Um, I don't think it takes too many plays to master this, but there are multiple modules with which you can play and definitely multiple ways to win. It's not as straightforward as you might actually think. Um, it took about half an hour to learn it from the rule book. It's actually a fairly straightforward game and the rule book itself is really, really good. And of course, you know, I'm referring to the one that didn't actually come with the game. It's got an excellent rule summary on the back page. Um, how long did it take to teach? I think, I think it's actually quite easy to teach this one because the concept is very straightforward. And then everything you have to use is in front of you, right? So like you have your own tavern, um, which you add pieces to, or you lay your patrons out on. So it makes it very easy, like visually to learn how this game functions. It's not abstract in that kind of sense. Now sure, it's not deeply thematic either, but there's enough there to keep you connected with what it is you're doing. I found it very easy to pick it up and I understood the concept very clearly um, from the rule book. You know, it was obvious what we were trying to do. Um, it didn't take us overly long to get going as a whole. I wanna say 30 to 40 minutes between going through the setup for the first time um, and going through maybe the first turn or two, because as we all know, those are the slowest. Um, definitely by the time we got to a second game, it was much much, much quicker and we were much more on the ball about kind of what strategies we wanted to employ. Um, setup time, let's see, it's, it literally takes like five minutes to set this up because you give each other your taverns, you have a set of coloured dice that belong only to you and then you need a deck full of cards to start the game with. Um, it's only something like 10. So that's pretty, pretty handy to do. Um, does it take up much space on the table? I think it could if you had more than like, you know, two or three players. Um, because everyone needs their own tavern. You also need a scoreboard in the middle. It's not particularly big. And you need room then for all of the cards that you can purchase um, throughout the game. Um, there's a tableau of those which, from which you buy. So they need to also be visible to everyone. So I guess it's kind of a medium sized game. Um, I don't think you could play it on a small table. Um, component quality here. Um, there is a lot of cardboard in this game, everything is made of cardboard. Um, for the most part, it's solid and durable. Um, we did manage to rip a few pieces when we were popping them out. So for instance, there's a first player token you make, um, you know, to make 3D out of two pieces of cardboard. And there is also a, a round marker as well, which has a beautiful moon on it. And we, we managed to rip that. Um, that could have just, you know, be us. But I was a little I was a little surprised by that. But overall, the components are really lovely. There's a lot of very special touches in particular. So the beer mats are what you put your rolled dice on and each one of those is unique. And I love the fact that one had hangman on it, um, one had X's and O's, um, you know, one was like counting down time and one had beer stains. And I just, I thought that was such a nice touch. Also the bars themselves or the taverns are, you know, uniquely named. 
think it's cool too and I love the whole picture it gives you. As a whole the components in this are fairly nice. I think somebody put a little bit of extra effort in them to make them kind of special. Um, so how much does this game cost? It costs about £40 which is roughly 50 euros. Um, is that good value? Um, I think there. I think this is a game that you will play a lot of. Um, I find that a lot with kind of deck builders, don't you? Um, that you play a lot of them. And, the, and because the components are good, I don't know, I think it might be a little bit pricey for what it is, but I do think it's very, very good. Um, I'm surprised it's not in the similar bracket um, price-wise as the Quacks of Quidlinburg, I think it's slightly more. But yet again, it hasn't been printed in English, so it's probably not made it that far yet. So, you know, but as a whole, I, you know, I definitely don't feel ripped off. I think it's fair, I think it's about right. Okay, so most important thing, I suppose, how, how did the game make me feel or what, what was the player experience like? Um, this game is definitely one where you find yourself, you know, planning ahead um, and you can get really lost in that puzzle because the theme is there but it's not it's not something that's affecting what you're doing it's literally a setting for this kind of abstract game to happen where you're trying to maximize everything you know so you want to have this dice roll to activate such a thing um, so that you can buy something else there's a lot of that going on um, I didn't find it particularly taxing as a puzzle which made it all the more fun for me um, so because you know you're not really like it they're not these huge weighty decisions where if you pick one thing over the other it could be victory or death. Um, it's more which way are you going with things and I found it very enjoyable to be able to kind of relax and have fun with it um, and it's the kind of game that if you lost you didn't feel terrible about because you got to build your own engine and do your own things. However, it does encourage me every time I play it to want to improve my ability of playing it. I feel like I'm still testing out strategies and I think I will be for some time yet. The other thing that surprises me actually while playing this is that I never feel like I'm doing a lot. It never feels like, you know, I've made some important choices here, but I always end up doing surprisingly well. Um, now, my husband who I've played with is definitely more tactical um, and you know works things out better than I do but we always end up being relatively close in scores and I think that says something about the quality of the game rather than the quality of the player you know when scores end up being very close together um, but on the whole I had a lot of fun with it it's one I'm very eager to play again because it's not so heavy but yet there are kind of fun and interesting choices to be made you know, do I want to get beer and get more patrons? Do I want to get money and upgrade my building? You know, I still haven't managed to upgrade this part of my tavern yet and I want to try that next time I play. It's very inviting. Um, it's not, is it the most exciting? No, but it's definitely very fun and very chill. Um, so yeah, so those are my insights on D Tavern and M Thief and Pal. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any comments or questions you'd like to ask about it, why not ask in the questions below? Um, I'll do my best to answer them. And if you'd like to do something nice, why not like or subscribe to the channel? Um, I do all sorts of videos um, and I'm testing this one out as kind of a, a new style of thing. So hopefully I will meet you again in the future. Thanks for watching and until next time everybody, take care. Bye bye.